you're probably familiar with the situation. You're in the middle of a 3D printing project full of ideas and drive, but time is ticking. A prototype has to be produced quickly, so you turn up the printing speed. But instead of a perfect result, you suddenly see these unslightly wavy lines on the surface with ghosting and ringing. The absolute nightmare for every maker. But don't panic. Today, I'm going to show you how to make your printer faster and more efficient without compromising on quality. Let's dive in, shall we? Imagine you are working on a high precision 3D printing project. Everything is going perfectly until suddenly unslightly wavy lines become visible along the edges or in fine details. The phenomenon is called ghosting, also known as ringing, and is one of the most common challenges in 3D printing. These patterns are caused by vibrations that occur when the printhead abruptly slows down or accelerates. This is caused by the inertia of the printhead which generates these vibrations and transfers them directly to the print object. The waves are reminiscent of concentric circles that occur when a stone falls into water and they mainly occur when there are sudden changes in direction. But why exactly does this happen? There are several main reasons. The mechanical inertia of the printhead, excessively high printing speeds, insufficient damping by the print frame, the belts, and incorrectly set parameters such as acceleration and jerk. With some printers, you can even hear these vibrations. In my case, I printed a test object with my Voron 0.2 CNC from Feistech. A detailed review of this printer will be published on this channel in the coming weeks. So make sure you subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss out anything. Here you can see how the wave patterns become more and more pronounced as the printing speed increases. Different speeds show how much the problem can escalate. If you're wondering why the results are so visible, or in this case, warping is clearly recognizable, I used the ABS filament stone gray from Novofill for this test. In order to be able to film the printing process for you, I had to print with the door open. ABS actually requires a high chamber temperature, otherwise the material will detach from the printing plate. However, as this video is only about ringing, I took this risk in order to be able to demonstrate the result to you better. So why did I choose ABS? The matte gray filament is one of my favorites for testing as it does not forgive any mistakes. Even the smallest inaccuracy becomes visible. It is comparable to a gray or silver car where every repaint or tiny defect immediately catches the eye. This filament brings even the smallest printing errors to light and is therefore perfect for targeted optimization. If your printer is having problems, I recommend you try out this filament. The advantage, we have already gained a lot of experience with this material and can quickly recognize where possible errors are based on your images. So we can help you specifically. As always, you can find the link to the filament in the video description. Imagine you're sitting in a room with a humming fan that just won't stop making annoying noises. Now you can put on headphones with active noise cancelling. These headphones pick up the sounds of the fan with microphones, analyze them and generate exactly opposite sound wave. The result? The noises cancel each other out and you can enjoy silence. An input shaper in 3D printing works in a similar way, only for mechanical vibrations. 
If the printhead of your 3D printer moves quickly or stops abruptly, the inertia of the printhead creates a vibration that continues and causes unslightly wavy lines on your print object, known as ghosting. The input shaver acts like active noise cancelling for a printer. By making tiny changes, the input shaper actively equalizes the vibrations before they affect the print object. The results are significant reduction in ghosting and improved print quality. Just like headphones that make annoying noises disappear. If you want to learn more, I can recommend the video from 3D printers and a whiteboard. The link is in the video description. To set up an input shaper on your 3D printer, you first need a motion sensor such as the widely used ADXL345. This sensor records precise movements and saves data, especially those caused by vibrations and oscillations. Many modern commercial printers already have the ADXL345 integrated and it also permanently installed in some DIY printers. If your printer does not yet have a motion sensor, you can easily retrofit it. The ADXL345 is available in different versions so that you can customize it to your needs. The classic PCB version with pin strip can be connected directly to the printer's electronics. As an alternative, there are models with a ribbon cable that offer you more flexibility during installation. The most user-friendly is the USB version, such as the USB ADXL from ISIC, also known as KUSPA. This model is compact, easy to handle and is simply connected via USB, which makes installation much easier. You can order the KUSPA directly from ISIC's official shop or on platforms such as AliExpress. The links can be found in the video description. The exact setup of the sensor depends heavily on the respective model, which is why I will not go into this in detail here. It is the best to take a look on the instructions on GitHub. If your sensor, for example an ADXL345, is set up correctly, you can start the test to configure your input shaper. The Clipper firmware already includes a basic function to help you measure the resonant frequencies of your printer and adjust the movements accordingly. This function can be used directly and offer a solid introduction. For even easier and more versatile use, I recommend the ShakeTune tool from Frix. This tool expands the test option and makes the configuration more user-friendly. ShakeTune is currently being overhauled due to an update of Clipper. By the time this video is published, ShakeTune should already been updated to version 5.0. If it still does not work, this could be because of your Clipper has been updated to the latest version while ShakeTune is not yet fully compatible. In this case, I recommend simply waiting a few days until the update for ShakeTune is available. As soon as it is available, you will be able to work with the new version without any problems and use the full functionality to optimize your input shaper. The installation of ShakeTune is described in detail on the corresponding GitHub page. You can find the link in the video description. As the setup is well explained there, I won't go into further detail here. As soon as everything is set up, you are ready to start your first test. If you have a Core XY printer, you should definitely start with the Compare Belts module. This module checks whether your belts are evenly tensioned, a fundamental requirement for precise printing results. If you have a Cartesian printer instead, for example with a moving bed in the Y direction, you can skip this chapter and continue directly with the next configuration. You can make various settings in the command menu of the module. As soon as the test is complete, you can view the results in the machine tab under ShakeTune results slash belts. There you will find a graphic with two lines showing the tension of your belts. The aim is to make these lines as congruent as possible to ensure that both belts are working evenly. In case the lines deviate from each other, refer to the Frix documentation to find out what to do in your case. The documentation offers helpful solutions for setting the belt tension correctly and achieving the best results. After you have tensioned the belts of your printer exactly the same or you are using a Cartesian printer, you can start the next test via the command menu. The printer will now make a few movements to measure the resonances. Do not get confused by the generated noises. Depending on the surface of your printer is placed on, the test can become quite loud. You can follow the progress of the test in the command line. Once the test is complete, you will find a graphic in the input shaper folder. This shows you a graph with deflections that mark the resonance frequencies of your printer. The highest deflection indicates the frequency at which the strongest vibrations occur. Based on this data, you can select the optimum shaper type. The input shaper offers several options, such as CV, MCV, EI, 2-hump EI and 3-hump EI. 
The aim should be to use CV or MCV, as these efficiently reduce vibrations. However, if more complex shapers such as EI, 2-hump EI or 3-hump EI have to be used, this often indicates mechanical problems that would merely be concealed by these shapers. These variants dampen a broader frequency spectrum, which can lead to a loss of the fine details in the print object. In addition, lower acceleration values are often required with these shapers, which limits the printing speed. If the analysis shows several deflections in the graph, you should check your printer for possible problems, such as loose belts, unstable frames, or incorrect adjustments. In the Frick's documentation, you will find a detailed troubleshooting guide that can help you to solve the problem. If you still can't find a solution, please write your problems in the comments and we will be happy to help you. The table above the graph shows you the recommended values that you need to enter in your printer config. After restarting the firmware, the new settings will become active. You can then start a test print during which you should notice a significant improvement in print quality. You can also approach the displayed acceleration values, but bear in mind that your printer must be able to withstand this load in the long term. Higher accelerations generate stronger forces which can increase the wear on the components. During the test print you will see that the ringing has almost completely disappeared. The noise of the printer also changed noticeably. The clearly noticeable vibration noises are significantly reduced and the printer works noticeably quieter and more evenly. This is another clear indication that the vibrations have been successfully minimized. With the input shaper activated, I was able to achieve remarkable results the surface of the printed object is exceptionally smooth, even at high print speeds. It is possible that your printer generates noticeable vibrations at certain speeds despite the input shaper being activated. This can be caused by other printer components that the input shaper cannot influence directly. A good example is a test object that I printed at a speed of 100 mm per second with the input shaper activated, a speed that is considered a standard for many 3D printers. Nevertheless, noticeable vibrations could be heard. The third shake tune module can be used to analyze these problems in more depth. Various adjustments are also possible here. The maximum speed is particularly important. If you want to print at more than 200 mm per second, you should increase the speed limit accordingly so that the tests reflect the realistic conditions of your printer. This module generates a speed-related vibration profile that represents vibrations in relations to the printing speed rather than frequencies. The test takes a little longer, as does the subsequent generation of the graphic. You can find the results in the vibration subfolder. The center chart in the top row is particularly important. In this diagram you can see speed ranges marked in green, in which your printer operates with low vibration and which are optimal for printing. On the other hand, wide areas indicate strong vibrations and should be avoided. In my case, the diagram clearly showed that strong vibrations occur at 100 mm per second. I then used this information to check my slicer settings. I set all speeds to 200 mm per second instead of 100 mm per second and check whether 100 mm per second was still active somewhere due to other parameters such as specific settings for outer walls or infill. After making sure that these speeds were no longer being used, I printed the object again. The results are amazing. The ringing has almost completely disappeared and the print quality has improved by a lot. I also tested the same object at higher speeds and was able to achieve consistently convincing results with the input shaper activated. This method shows how important it is to analyze both frequency and speed profiles in order to achieve optimum printing results. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you never miss out when we upload a new video. Let me know your experiences or questions in the comments down below. We look forward to hearing from you. If you want to stay tuned, we have two exciting videos for you. In this video, we show you free tips for the Orca slicer that you probably don't know yet, or take a look at our latest review of probably the fastest Cartesian printer, the LH Stinger here. Hope we see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.